What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Treads Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm gonna show you how I made this beautiful, delicious, smoky, juicy, amazing Thanksgiving spread featuring a rotisserie turkey, the world's best homemade gravy, sausage stuffing, a loaded sweet potato, some fresh cornbread, and of course a smoked pumpkin pie. Coming up! This is a turkey! Pat it dry. And what I got here is a 12 pound turkey. Picked this up at my local grocery store. Nothing too fancy here. And the reason I'm opening it in this bucket is because as you can see, there is a lot of moisture trapped in there and it just makes a mess of things. And it's probably too late this year, but it's always a good idea to try and get your turkey a little bit in advance because they're a lot cheaper than right around the holidays. So now I'm just gonna go in here, pull out all the giblets and neck and whatnot. Make sure there's nothing in this cavity. And this was in fact frozen. I bought it about a week ago. These things take forever to thaw out in the fridge, but you could always run it under some cold water if you felt so inclined. I'm also gonna take off this plastic doohickey back here. Don't want that if I can get it out. Oh, there we go. Beautiful turkey. And I always like to get the smaller turkeys rather than the gigantic ones. They cook quicker, you've got a better skin to meat ratio. And if I'm cooking for a crowd, it's a lot easier to cook two 12 pounders than one 24 pounder. And now that this thing is nice and padded dry, we're gonna go ahead and give it a good old dry brine. And brining your turkey, whether it's a dry brine or a traditional wet brine is really good idea. It's gonna make sure the meat is nice and tender and seasoned all the way throughout. And especially the way we're cooking this today, which is gonna be on the rotisserie on the chud box, by the way. Doing a dry brine for a couple of days in the fridge is the easiest way to go about it. We don't have to worry about trying to fit a five gallon bucket in our fridge. And also it's gonna stay uncovered, giving us some nice dry skin, which should get nice and crispy. And because we're cooking this on the rotisserie, I'm gonna leave this whole, but if you wanna learn how to spatch cock a bird and cook it on a chud box or on the offset smoker, you can check out my previous Thanksgiving videos from years past. But I've always wanted to do a rotisserie turkey. So all we need to do now is get this thing seasoned up. And to do so really couldn't be any easier. We're just gonna grab ourselves some diamond crystal kosher salt and just get this thing completely covered, wings and all, making sure we get under the wings and any little crevices. Really wanna get this thing fully covered. And again, I'm using diamond crystal kosher salt. If you're using Morton's or table salt, you may wanna use a lot less than what you're seeing me doing, but it's a big bird. It's got a lot of meat. It can take a lot of salt. Flip it over. Get this breast side as well. A little bit of salt in that cavity as well why not and yeah just getting this thing fully coated looking good to me and you could go on with other seasonings at this point i'm gonna keep it just salt today tuck these wing tips just so it sits a little flatter now pop it onto a wire rack so now into the fridge this goes just like this for the next few days and really you can do this for as long as you've got i'd say minimum probably four hours that's really not going to do much penetration with the salt into the meat ideally a couple days is what you're looking at today right now it's monday morning i'm going to be cooking this on wednesday afternoon and that should be plenty of time for that salt to really go deep into the meat dry out the moisture and then reabsorb that dry brine and make sure we have some nice evenly seasoned turkey so we'll see this in a couple days and while we wait for that turkey to dry, Brian, we can start getting everything else ready, starting with a smoky turkey stock. So let's fire up the pit. Got this chud box fired up on its way up to 350 degrees, and now we're gonna roast off all those things we pulled out of that turkey, including this neck. <laughs> on and everything in that little bag the giblets the heart the liver things like that also this time of year at the grocery store you can just buy some turkey necks highly recommend it super cheap great way to fortify any stock or make your own from scratch like we're doing today and getting a little bit of smoky flavor on these is always a good call but you don't have to do this actually you do come on we're trying to make the best gravy ever but pellet grill offset direct heat grill whatever you got also got some of these big old turkey wings throw those on there as well man those are huge and like I said, we're just trying to get some really good color on these, some flavor, help add some barbecue charcoal notes to our turkey stock, which we'll be using to make our gravy and probably make a few sides. So maybe about an hour. And just like that, we've got some lovely color on these turkey necks. So into the pot they go. Turkey wings, looking beautiful. Boop, turkey neck. And our last turkey neck. Also going in with some chopped up onion, skins and all. I'm going with two because they're starting to turn in my fridge. Great time to get rid of stuff, folks. Also going in with some celery, some rosemary, sage, some garlic, a couple of dry bay leaves, some carrots, and some black peppercorns as well. And top that off with some water. And once brought up to a gentle simmer, we're gonna let this cook away for a real long time. All right, y'all, it's the next day. The stock has been rolling overnight, looking nice and dark, and all of the nutrients and everything has been extracted. So now we're gonna send it through a strainer. Oh yeah, no meat left on these 
these bones. And now we've got some beautiful, smoky, delicious. Smells really good, tastes great too. This turkey stock pretty much already tastes like turkey soup, but I'm gonna put this in the fridge, let it cool down and gelatinize a little bit, and then it's ready for whenever we need it. Turkey day is finally upon us, folks. And before we get that turkey on, I'm gonna bust out a couple of sides. So let's go ahead and fire up the pit. It's always this time of year that I just can't help but be thankful for that pesky little snake in my boot. And to start things off, I got this smoker fired up and I'm gonna start drying out my bread for our stuffing that we're gonna be making. This is just some white bread, a couple loaves. I cut the crusts off and cubed these up. And now we're just gonna stale them out, dry them out a little bit. And if they pick up a little smoke flavor, that's fine with me. So probably about, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes on the pit, which will probably be around 250, 300 degrees. And our stuffing today is going to be a breakfast sausage stuffing. So right now we need to make some breakfast sausage with a pork belly. Pat it dry. And I really like using pork belly to make breakfast sausage because it is a breakfast meat after all, just like bacon. And you know, if bacon's made out of pork belly, then I think breakfast sausage deserves the same treatment. So I'm just gonna cube this up. And now into the freezer this goes for a little bit to get nice and cold. While we wait, let's go ahead and get our spices ready. Spices for our breakfast sausage include some kosher salt, some dried sage, some red chili flakes, black pepper, granulated garlic, dry parsley, freshly ground fennel, some dry thyme, and some coriander. And just get that all nice and mixed up. <laughs> Now that our meat is sufficiently chilled, through the grinder we go. I got the coarse dye on there today. And through we go. Beautiful, nice and crumbly. And now we're gonna go in with all of our spices and just get those as incorporated as possible. And I'm really not trying to overwork the meat right now because I'm gonna send this through again with all these spices just to make it a little finer of a sausage. And usually I don't send sausages through the grinder with spices just because it kind of gums up the grinder and you lose a lot of spice in there. But mostly I don't do that because I'm usually putting a binder in here like milk powder or something. And that's a pretty high volume of powder. But because there's no milk powder in this, it should go through very easily. And for the second grind, I'm gonna put on the smaller die. I believe it's a five mil or something like that. And through one more time. Lovely looking stuff, smells great. And there we go, breakfast sausage is done. Next up, let's get that sausage cooked off. Started by going into our pot with one stick of butter and just let that melt down until all the water cooks off. And then we're going in with a pound and a half of our freshly made breakfast sausage. Now we're just gonna cook this down, trying to break it up a bit till it's cooked through nicely browned and nice and pebbly. And once our sausage is cooked through looking very nice, we're gonna go in with our veg, including one onion, our celery, garlic, and our freshly chopped sage. And now we're gonna cook this down for another 10 minutes or so just to soften up this veg. And just like that, this is looking absolutely fantastic, smelling even better. And to deglaze the bottom of this pot, going in with two cups of our turkey stock and just look at the color of this stuff. It is so good, beautiful. And now we're just gonna try and get up all the bits off the bottom and anything that's cooked onto the side of the pot because that's all just good flavor. Next up over here, I'm going into a bowl with three eggs, our freshly chopped up parsley and another two cups of our turkey broth and get that all mixed up to break up those eggs. And then we're slowly gonna stream this into our meat mixture here, trying to go slowly that way we don't scramble the eggs. And off the pit comes our beautiful bread. As you can tell, it is beautifully dried out, but not toasted. We got a little smoky flavor to it. And we're gonna just start going in with all of this. That worked out really well, which is great because that's a lot of bread to toast off. And I don't think all that would have fit in my oven. But we're gonna start gently folding this because we don't want to completely crush up all these bread cubes, but we do want to make sure they're all nicely hydrated. Just little by little until everything is all soaked up. This might take a minute. And just like that, all of that bread made it into this pot. And I'm not gonna lie, I did not think it was all gonna fit, but sure enough, here we are. I gave it a little taste. It tastes really, really good. Mm. But now it's time to pop this into a baking dish. 13 by nine inch pan. I'm gonna hit this with some waggy beef tallow. Sprayable waggy beef tallow, that is. Because what doesn't sound good about that? And then in we go. 
And there we have it. I'm gonna wrap this in foil until we're ready to cook it. All right, y'all, full transparency. I was totally planning on cooking this entire meal for dinner tonight, but then Brooke tells me that she picked up a shift and is gonna be at work and is super bummed out that she won't be able to eat some fresh Thanksgiving food. So being the good guy that I am, I told her that I would cook it tomorrow, which actually works out just fine because everything we've done so far can be done in advance. But there is one more thing we can knock out tonight to make tomorrow a little easier, which is some pumpkin pie. Starting with one can of pumpkin puree. Ooh. One can of sweetened condensed milk. Oh, that is thick. Good gravy. One whole egg and three egg yolks. Our spice mixture, which is some salt, some ground ginger, cinnamon, and some Chinese five spice going in. And of course, we're gonna go in with some freshly grated nutmeg and just get that all nice and mixed up. And once thoroughly mixed, in we go to a nine inch previously frozen pie shell. Make sure to get it all in there. Gotta love how quick and easy it is to whip up a quick pumpkin pie. And because this is a Chef John recipe, we gotta give the old tapa tapa. Just get out any air bubbles. And now it's time to throw it on the pit. Got a ripping hot 425 degree fire today. We're gonna cook at that temperature for about 15 minutes. I wish my grates were a little more level. That's fine. After the first 15 minutes at 425, I dropped the temps down to 350 where it'll cook for the next probably 30 minutes, which gives us plenty of time to make some whipped cream. Started by going into a bowl with some heavy whipping cream. Aww. Oh, so thick. And then we're gonna bust out the old beaters and just whip this until it becomes whipped cream. And after just a couple minutes, we're starting to get some nice soft peaks on there, looking beautiful. But we're not just making whipped cream, folks. We're making a bourbon whipped cream. Starting by going in with a couple tablespoons of some powdered sugar. Ooh. And you can dial this to however sweet or unsweet you want your whipped cream to be. And then of course, a splash of your favorite bourbon. That seems like enough. And then whisk that to incorporate. And just like that, our bourbon whipped cream is done. You can take this to however stiff or soft you want it to be. I kind of like it a little bit on the softer side. So this is looking perfect, but highly recommend making whipped cream if you've never done it before because you can add whatever flavors you like and this stuff it is so good, love it. And just like that, after about 35 minutes off the pit, this comes, got that nice little jiggle wiggle to it. And that was a surprisingly very easy cook. And one thing I'll tell you is whenever I'm making pumpkin pie, I like to give it a little jiggle jiggle to see how set the inside is. And when I was opening up the smoker just a minute ago, I figured, hey, if I open the door really hard, that'll jiggle the whole pit and I can see the wiggle wiggle of this pumpkin pie. But of course, when I slammed that door, a bunch of creosote fell from the ceiling. So now I've got a bunch of little black specks on this thing, which is unfortunate but other than that this thing was looking pretty much perfect so using a smoker to cook a pumpkin pie is definitely a viable option got a little toothpick here I've been testing the doneness and once it kind of pulls out clean all over you know you got yourself a perfect pumpkin pie so now I'm gonna cool this down at room temp and then probably pop it in the fridge because I like a chilled pumpkin pie and especially with that bourbon whipped cream I know this is gonna be good so I will see y'all tomorrow <laughs> Now we are in fact cooking this turkey on the mini chud box on the rotisserie. And I know what you're thinking. Hey man, that's a gigantic fire you just built for a bird that's gonna be just a few inches above those logs. And that's because for another few days here, I actually have two chud boxes on the patio. And I figured it'd be kind of fun to use one as a burn barrel, burning down some logs and use the other one to shovel those coals into, which will have the turkey on it. And not only will this make fire management a lot easier because we can shovel coals in and out to get the exact temperature we want, but also it should add some extra smoky flavor as opposed to using just plain charcoal. Speaking of which, I think it's time to find get that bird loaded up. And after three days of dry brining in the fridge, you can tell this bird is looking nice and dry. We can't see any visible salt, meaning it all went into the meat, and this skin should get nice and crispy. But before we throw this on the old spit, we're gonna tie it up. And to do that, we're gonna bust out some good old butcher's twine, nice long piece. And then we're gonna get this thing tied up, starting by getting the string folded in two, so we have a nice center point. And we're gonna go over here, and we're just gonna kind of wrap it around the neck. Beautiful. And then come under the breast to the backside, where we will tie it right under here. Give the old butcher's knot where we just kind of wrap it around a few times so it slips on nice and tight and give that a pull. All looking nice and plump already. Now I'm going to secure that with one knot just to be safe. Shit. All right, we'll try that again. Now we're going to wrap these around these drunnies. Give that a little loop-de-loop. -loop. 
At this point, we'll take the strings and go back towards myself here over the breast. I'm gonna untuck these wing tips. Back over the bird. We're gonna kind of go right into these little wings right here and we're gonna flip this whole thing over. Give this another little loop-de-loop. -loop. Keep coming down towards the tail. Flip it over again. Make sure everything is nice and tight and then we'll simply just tie it off. Beautiful, nice and tight. Snip the extra and there we go. A beautifully tied up turkey and I did it this way because I want all that breast meat to stay exposed. I don't wanna have strings running over the top of it. Just for presentation purposes, make sure we get some nice crispy skin. Now at this point you could add some more seasoning, add another layer of rub, maybe put some butter underneath the skin. Really do whatever you like to do with your turkeys. But for me, I'm gonna keep it real simple today with just a dry brine, really focusing on getting that skin as crispy as possible. So all we need to do now is get it loaded onto the pit. Over at mini chud box number two, get this bad boy opened up, get that grate out of there. Always remember to tighten your tripod and we're gonna get our spit sent through. Load up hook number one and get our turkey loaded up. Ooh, sorry buddy. There we go. Get this spike pushed into the meat. Trying to avoid the bones here. Pesky leg in the way. And then load up spike number two. Make sure they're as deep as you can get them and tighten them down. Beautiful. And now to see if it actually works. Very nice. This is so much easier than using just a chimney or something. It's like cooking a whole hog. I feel like Miss Tootsie right now. All right, game plan for this cook. I'm gonna rock it right around 300 degrees and just let it keep on spinning for probably about three hours, but we'll see. Already starting to look nice and glisteny, which is a beautiful sight. And while that cooks, it's time to knock out everything else. Starting with some sweet potatoes. Keeping these real simple today, we're gonna just bake them off. But first we're gonna stab them with a bunch of holes and wrap them all in foil. And then onto a 420 degree pellet cooker they go. Just gonna forget about these for probably an hour or so. We'll find out. And while those bake off, let's go ahead and make some cornbread. Starting by melting some butter in this eight inch cast iron pan. Now the recipe calls for a 10 inch, but I think I left that at the chud shop. So we're gonna see how this goes. And we're gonna just set this aside to melt. And in the meantime, we'll get everything else ready. Starting with some cornmeal, some all purpose flour, some sugar, some salt, baking powder, and baking soda. And just get that all mixed up. And then I'm gonna make a little well in the middle. And I'm gonna go in with some sour cream, some buttermilk, and two eggs and just get that mixed up beautiful and now we're going to go in with our melted butter as well as a little bit of olive oil and mix that until everything is combined beautiful and today we're making a jalapeno cheddar cornbread so in goes some finely diced up jalapeno as well as some freshly grated sharp tillamook cheddar and just get that all nice and folded in and now back into our buttery cast iron skillet we go and now on to the old camp chef we go for about 20 minutes. Next up, we're gonna make a compound butter for our sweet potatoes. So into this bowl here, I'm going in with some unsalted butter. Boop, lovely stuff. And we're gonna add some Sweet Cheeks rub. This is my sweet rub. It's got some nice savory and sweet notes and a lot of maple sugar in there. So it's got some really good flavor to it. It should make for a perfect little compound butter for our sweet potatoes. Bust out the old this thing and get this whipped up. I'm just gonna keep tasting this and adding as much rub as I think it needs. And it can take quite a bit. And just like that, our whipped sweet cheek butter is done. This stuff is super tasty, highly recommend it. This would be great on some pancakes, but it'll be even better on some sweet potatoes. And speaking of butters, let's go ahead and make ourselves an herb butter. Ooh, got a pound of butter, just gonna melt that down. And once melted down nice and bubbly, you can hear all that water starting to boil out. We're gonna go ahead and start skimming off some of this foam, giving us a bit of a clarified butter. Don't boil over, don't boil over. I think we're good. We're gonna let that calm down for a minute. But just scraping off the white foam on top, cause that is what will burn if we get this butter too hot. And I wanna get it nice and hot. And once most of it is skimmed off, I'm gonna pour it into another vessel here, trying to leave all the milk solids that sunk to the bottom at the bottom leaving us with some pure butter fat, as you can see in there. Don't need any of that. Although as we discovered last year, this stuff is great on some mashed potatoes. And now that our butter is clarified, I brought it up to about 300 degrees and we're gonna make it into an herb butter by throwing in some fresh rosemary, ooh, some sage and some thyme. 
Smells so good, very Thanksgiving-y. And while we're at it, we'll throw in some garlic as well. Why not? Beautiful stuff. I'm gonna let this cool down, strain out all the veg, and then we'll have a beautiful herb-infused butter. And just like that, off the pit comes our beautiful cornbread. I must say that is looking very nice. Didn't get too dark or smoky or anything like that. I gave it the old toothpick test, and once that was pulling out clean, off it came. So now I'm gonna set this aside and let this cool down as well. Back over at the pellet grill, I've dropped the temp down to about 275 degrees, and now it's time to throw on our stuffing. And that should probably take about 45 minutes till we check on it again. Meanwhile, let's check in on this bird. Ooh, that looks phenomenal. Beautiful color on that. That looks like a classic turkey. Wonderful golden brown color. You can tell it's starting to drip onto those coals. I've seen a lot of smoke coming out here, which is a good thing. Although right there looks kind of gnarly. Not sure what that's about, but it's kind of the thing about these rotisserie birds is that they base themselves continually with all the juices coming out, but loving the color on that. Temp in right in the 145 range. So now we're gonna finish this thing off by cranking the temps up probably to around 350 just to make sure we get some crispy skin and we're gonna start hitting it with some South Chicago packing sprayable Wagyu beef tallow because what doesn't sound good about that? And the reason I want to do this is because a lot of the juices you see all over this bird is water coming out of there. And that's not going to help the skin get very crispy. So by spraying it with some tallow, we're going to get some extra crispy skin. And also the added benefit of some really good beef fat flavor. Love it. And if y'all haven't heard of South Chicago Packing, they make some of the best fats in the industry. I've been using their products for years. Their Wagyu beef fat is so much better than anything I've ever rendered myself. It's just got this creamy texture to it and it's got phenomenal flavor. I use it for baking breads, making beef fat flour tortillas. They also make really good lards and other fats that I keep my deep fryer filled with. Highly recommend that. But having Wagyu beef tallow in spray form is a game changer for the backyard barbecue cook. Ever since it came out, I've been using it all the time, making crispy skin chicken, crispy skin turkey, as we can see. Spraying a pan before searing a steak, this stuff is so versatile, so flavorful. And even if they weren't sponsoring this video, I would definitely still be using this because for a turkey like that, that doesn't have all that much flavor going for it, adding some Wagyu beef fat to it is a no brainer. But it was really hard to do up until they came out with this spray stuff. So highly recommend picking some up. I'll have a link in the description box down below if you want to get some for yourself. Highly recommend it. This stuff is sprayable gold. So thank you Chicago Packing for sponsoring this turkey day. But like I said, I'm going to bump the temps up on that turkey. I'm going to keep spraying it every 10 minutes or so until we come up to an internal temp of around 160. And in the meantime, I think it's time to bust out some gravy. Gravy, super simple. Well, I forgot to hit record, folks, but what we got here is a super simple gravy using a half cup of our herb butter we just made and a half cup of all-purpose flour. And we're just gonna heat this on low heat until it starts to brown up a bit. And general rule of thumb for making a roux like this is the darker you make it, the more flavor it'll have, but also the less thickening power it'll have. So if you like a really dark roux in there, you should probably go with a little more than you're expecting, but that is looking pretty much perfect to me. So now we're gonna go in with some of our beautiful, nice, thick, jiggly turkey stock. Oh, it's, it's jello. Just a little bit at first until everything is nicely combined and then we'll go in with the rest. And this is where all that work we did making that beautiful smoky super gelatinous stock is really gonna pay off because this gravy is unbelievable. In fact, I think I might need to make some more. Oops about a quart and a half of stock. And now we're gonna bring this up to a boil. And the thing with gravies is once it's up to a boil like this, that's when you can really start to tell how thick it's gonna be because that's when all the flowers have started to gelatinize. So once it's looking nice and thick, but still pourable, you know, gravy consistency, then we'll pull it off. And just like that, after reducing down a little bit, this is looking nice and thick and smelling so good. Coats the back of a spoon. So now it's time to give it a little taste. Mm, I swear that's the best turkey stock I've ever made. It is so good. It's got such a rich mouthfeel because it's not only thickened by the roux, but also by all the gelatin that's in those bones and in that stock. But to finish it off, we're just gonna hit it with a little bit of salt and some freshly cracked black pepper. Mm -hmm. Give that a final taste and adjust and our beautiful gravy is done. All right, folks, I'm pretty sure this bird is done. Ooh, that looks so good. That beef tallow definitely helped give us that nice crispy skin. Looking good, smelling so good. So now I'm gonna pull all the coals out of here and let this thing cool down a little bit before I try and get it off of this spit. Beautiful. And right on time, our stuffing is done as well. Cooked this for about 45 minutes with the foil on, then took it off and let that top crisp up for about another 20 minutes. And now it is looking very tasty. Ow! Gotta say folks, I've cooked a lot of turkeys in my day, but this one is looking particularly good. Nice golden brown, kind of got that classic turkey look as opposed to a lot of the smoked ones I've done. But we're gonna let this cool down for a little bit while we get everything ready. Beautiful looking cornbread. Ooh, feels nice and tender. Nothing wrong with that, folks. Mm-hmm. 
beautiful pumpkin pie. Ooh, lovely consistency on that. And of course we'll top that with some of our bourbon whipped cream. Boop, now that's a bite. Sweet potatoes cooked to perfection. I'm gonna just go right through the top here. Ooh, nice and tender. Peel that back, give it the old foil boat. Give it a nice slit down the middle. Open her up. Oh, now that's a good looking sweet potato right there. And of course, our sweet cheeks butter. Nice healthy scoop of that. Just going right in the middle. Oh, that looks so good. And for a nice little crunch and garnish, we'll top that with some pumpkin seeds and some pecans. Why not? Beautiful. Ooh, yup. And of course, we can't forget about our beautiful sausage stuffing. Ooh, that's a healthy portion. Oh, that smells so good. Love it. The star of the show, this beautiful turkey. It's been resting down for a bit because you always want to let your meat rest. But the problem is this was pulled off around 160, 165 degrees. So after resting down, it's probably not very hot anymore. So to fix that, we're going to do what I do with every turkey every year and cover this with some really, really hot clarified herb butter. And this is going to accomplish a few different things. First and foremost, it's going to add some lovely flavor because this is infused with herbs and butter. Also, a turkey covered with beef tallow and butter. <laughs> yes, please. It's going to help crisp up the skin and and it's also gonna help warm this thing back up. But be careful, cause this stuff is hot. Oh yeah. No matter how you cook your turkey, folks, this is how you gotta finish it. Gotta love that sound. Beautiful. And there it is, folks. Chud's Giving 2023, looking so good. That bird, it's just classic. And of course, we got the smoky pumpkin pie, the fresh jalapeno cheese cornbread, the loaded sweet cheek butter, sweet potato, the breakfast sausage stuffing, and we gotta have our gravy. And it didn't make the thumbnail, but gotta have some cranberry sauce. All right, let's stop. In. First thing we need to do is take this string off. By the way, this cooked in about two and a half, three hours, so pretty quick cook. And it was very easy because I had that little burn barrel situation going. Man, this thing is tied up well. Hope I got them all. Think I did. Did a great job though. Held that bird together real nice. Nip that tail off. You could carve this classic right off this way, or you could just kind of break it down, which is probably what I'm going to do. Starting by taking these legs off. Oh, sounds juicy. It's been a minute since I carved into a bird that wasn't spatchcocked. Liking it though. If I was cooking for family who didn't really like smoked barbecue, which I don't have, but you know, if they wanted something a little more traditional, this is probably what I would do. Let's find that joint. Once that's separated, should come right out. And so far, looking incredibly juicy. Break that down. Yup. This other leg, again, impossibly juicy. Beautiful skin. Oh, I'm excited. Then we can go ahead and take these wings off, put a little pressure on them, find those joints, and they should come right off. Beautiful. Love it. And at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and go right through the top and just start pulling these boobs off. Ooh, sounding crispy. Just following the bones here. Probably should have taken that wishbone out first. Big, beautiful, boneless, juicy looking breast meat. Set that aside. Mm. Little sneak peek. And we'll do the same on this side. Boom, breast number two. Still got some meat on this carcass, which will be great for making some stock or making some turkey soup. Still got all this beautiful skin on the back. Ooh, save that for Papa. Don't forget about these little oysters in there. Best bite. But I'll take more time with this carcass, getting all that meat off after I dive into the rest of this. For starters, let's get some of this breast sliced up. Cuts very nicely. Skin staying on, that's good. Beautiful stuff. Again, nice juicy looking breast meat. Some of this skin over here is just looking at me. Call him a name. That's for the rest of this stuff. I think we can just kind of dive on in. So that being said, let's do so. I mean, where do you even start with a spread like this? Probably start with some of this breast meat looking so good. Give that a taste, shall we? Mm. Wow, that is phenomenal. Mm. It's got that rotisserie chicken flavor to it. Skin is nice and thin. Turkey is perfectly seasoned all the way throughout. Still nice and juicy. We'll dip in the gravy, shall we? Mm. That's it. That's the bite. Mm. Mm. That's really good. That gravy. Mm. Little extra piece of skin for Papa. Oh, that is phenomenal. The flavor on that is so good. It's giving me big rotisserie chicken vibes, like I said, especially that skin that was on the bottom. So good. Perfectly seasoned with salt. Got some really nice smoky flavor, but nothing too overpowering. And I know we did something right because the official taste tester is right there. Hi, you'll get yours in a minute. Whew, what should we try next? Classic Thanksgiving move right here. Mm, that is so tender. Good God. Mm-hmm. This is a really good turkey. Ooh, still got some crispy on that skin. Mm-hmm. Why is dark meat so much better? I mean, just look at that juiciness coming out of that thigh. Good gravy. Mm, that is all so good. Up next, a little cornbread. Mmm, jalapeno kick in there. That is a lovely cornbread. It's so tender, so moist. A little spice to it, a little cheddar to it. Probably goes good with gravy. Can confirm. That is lovely. Super quick and easy to make too. But the one I've been dying to try all day. This stuffing, homemade breakfast sausage. Yes, please. 
Damn, that is good. Mm. This is Kenji's recipe. And he says it's kind of like a savory bread pudding, right? Because it's got that egg in there and it's just so tender. That is phenomenal. Mm. Mm -hmm. That sausage is perfect. Needs a little gravy though. Yep. That's it. Guys gotta make this one. That's a phenomenal Thanksgiving side right there. Mm. And of course, the sweet potato. Not usually a sweet potato guy, but this one looks real good. A little crunchy, a lot of butter in there. Yep. Mm. That sweet butter is so good. Mm. Hmm. All right, where's Brooke? I'm so ready. Turkey breast, sausage stuffing, or dressing if you wanna be that guy. Of course, the world's best gravy. And we got a loaded sweet potato. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna miss Thanksgiving this year because I'm gonna be in France. France. And Thanksgiving's like my favorite food. It's the best food. Yeah. I say it every year that I need to make full turkeys more often, but since the last time I said that, I haven't done it, so. Okay, I'm just gonna do the classic turkey and gravy. Mmm. I'm gonna do the classic just eating skin with gravy. Good ah. lord. Let me take a bite of this. Mm. Mm hmm. I love the jalapeno cornbread. It's really good. Now let's do right. turkey and stuffing. Ooh, making the combos already. Mm hmm. This turkey is a lot more mm. traditional, classic mm -hmm. Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell? Norman Rockwell style turkey looking. You know, that golden brown, full bird. As do you know who Norman Rockwell is? He's a painter. Okay. <laughs> He's the one who invented Thanksgiving. <clears throat> oh, he is. He discovered America. As opposed to my spatch cocked, you know, buttery, peppery, smoky turkeys that mm -hmm. I've made. That was the most pathetic little gravy dip I've ever seen. Should we just pour this over the entire turkey? No. No? Okay. I'm gonna eat this for meal prep. You're gonna eat it for meals. Well, I, I did the prep. He's doing the prep. <laughs> I'm eating the meals. This All gravy right. is so... Oh! Alright, gravy dip. A little floater in there for ya. Oh, cranberry! Mm-hmm. A, yeah. a little bit of everything. Cornbread is something I've never made for Thanksgiving, but I think it fits mm -hmm. in quite nicely. It does. I will say, though, you might get a little pushback from that, because a lot of people like to do their leftovers in, like, rolls or something. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> rolls take about four hours to make. Yeah. <laughs> Cornbread takes about 25 minutes. Okay. And I made the perfect dinner roll last year for Thanksgiving. This is like a dessert almost. Mm hmm Have you ever had that one with the marshmallows on top? Yeah. Does anyone like that? I think it can be made right, yes. Well, they'll let us know in the comments for sure. <laughs> you know, my family would get together, all the extended family, every year for Thanksgiving. Really? That's that's unique. And uh, <laughs> I don't know who brought it, but someone always brought the marshmallow on top sweet potato thing. I wholeheartedly believe that you have to have jellied cranberry sauce on the Thanksgiving table. Mm. Fight it out. Well, it's such a classic flavor though. But it's good because it's, yeah, you get the sweet and the savory. It's like a cleanse it power that you put on top of everything. All right, what's your favorite bite? Turkey, mm. gravy stuffing, sweet potato, and cranberry. Oh, like you're gonna build a bite. <laughs> I thought you meant like what was your favorite component, but your I favorite, did do that, your I'm favorite sure. Your favorite component is all of it stacks <laughs> tall. I'm mm -hmm. really digging that gravy stuffing combo. Mm -hmm. And again, the turkey has nothing but salt on it. And some what? Butter. And some butter and some waggy beef tallow. But as far as spices, <laughs> it's incredibly, like even if you just eat the meat, like skin off, it's still incredibly flavorful. Yeah. How's the smoke level? It's not overwhelming it's whatsoever. Not, no. I, I would have known. It's almost roasted more than yeah. smoked, I would say. Yeah. Ooh, look, a piece of gravy turkey. You love to see it. All right, Brooke, before we feed the beast, who is being very anxious right now, I think everyone needs to see you take a big bite out of that turkey leg. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Stand back. Mm. It's a good-looking turkey leg. There you go. It's not quite as crispy as the one from last year. <laughs> no. That was deep fried and fat. Mm. You should check that out. Brooke, I forgot one thing. I bet people were yelling about it. I made some homemade pumpkin pie. Whipped cream. A giant dollop. Bourbon whipped cream on top. Do you know why they call it whipped cream? It's cream that's been whipped. Oh. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Very whiskey forward. <laughs> Oops. It's good though. Airy. That is a damn good pumpkin pie. A little bit of smoke, but again, I don't think I'd notice it if I didn't know it. Why is Thanksgiving food so good? I don't know. You've perfected it though. And now it's time for the official taste test. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye, love. Thank you. <laughs> All right, y'all, that is it. That is how to make an absolutely incredible Incredible Thanksgiving spread featuring a rotisserie turkey on the old chud box. Again, big shout out to South Chicago Packing. That beef spray really came in handy and added a whole nother layer of flavor. And as always, Thanksgiving sides are always great. I highly recommend that stuffing. The cornbread was really easy. Actually, all of this was pretty easy. Just took a while. And if you take anything away from this, as always, please make your own homemade smoky stock. It really does make everything so much better. And I highly recommend it. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you give any of these recipes a try for yourself, be sure to 
to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace. Bonus round. Hello, it's your mother. <laughs> no cornbread you for me. you? It's in my to-go box. Oh, okay. First time, first try, here I go. I chose a spoon because <laughs> I'm lazy. Mmm, <laughs> butter. What's the butter? It's got some of my sweet rub in it. Ooh, sweet rub. <laughs> the sausage stuffing gotta be my favorite. It's good, I like it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best part. Oh, that's fantastic. I love a good dark meat. Mm -hmm. What else? Mm -hmm. I am a renaissance princess right now, and it doesn't get any better. It's true. Huzzah! It's you can put that gravy on anything. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> <laughs>